Hanoi's capital is a modern and growing city loved by its residents. It has 15 districts, 36 agencies, 53,000 employees, and countless projects and initiatives. But with over 250 logos in use, this caused confusion and clutter. That's why we created one identity to unite Oslo. Three shapes, inspired by Oslo streetscapes, are the basic building blocks of the identity system. The system is flexible and simple enough to be used by everyone for everything. The digital design assistant we created gives all 53,000 city employees the power to design communications themselves, easily, quickly and correctly. Our font, Uslo Sans, is functional, versatile and usable everywhere. The design is inspired by generations of Oslo street signs. Dots and punctuation marks are transformed into Oslo shapes. The design system adapts to the diversity of the city's institutions and services. It creates a unified identity across all channels and is designed for use in two dimensions, three dimensions and motion. The new identity is a great tool to help Oslo and its residents to continue to connect and thrive together. Hej, eh, tack för att jag fick låta komma hit. Eh, jag ska som sagt fortsätta på engelsk. Eh, you just see the case video for the work that we have done for the city of Oslo. Eh, as you just seen, we have now one unified identity for the city, and it's now a lot easier for the citizens to understand what the uh, city do and how the city can help them. Um, and uh, we also have now one unifying symbol covering all the different sub-organizations within the city. So I'm going to take you through the way in which we approached this challenge and I'm also going to show you the result. We felt very privileged when we won this contract, uh, but also a bit uh, humbled. Uh, the existing city seal has been in use for almost 100 years and the last identity has been in use for 25 years about. So um, we knew that this is something that's going to be highly visible for all the residents and it's going to be in use probably for many years. So we felt the pressure was on and we better make something good and something that the, all the citizens can be really um, proud of. So that was the starting point. And I have to say this is probably the most complex branding issue and challenge in Norway in many years. Um, the political process has been extremely complicated and the same goes with the bureaucratic process um, and there's always been and, and also the involvement of all these different uh, 250 plus sub-organizations uh, they haven't been involved one, once but several times so the complexity of this political process has been a lot bigger than what we imagined when we started this process and that goes the same with our client so our client works uh, our main client in this project they work in the communication department in the city hall and for them as well this has been uh, way more complicated than what they thought. Um, so, you know, within political and bureaucratic procedures, there's a very fixed framework, and working with something that's mainly visual does not fit into those procedures at all. And it's also caused a bit of a headache for some of the lawyers in the City Hall. But finally, 27th of March this year, the identity was finally approved by the City Council, and that was obviously a big milestone for our project. So back to where we started. So this was the brief. Um, so the ambition here was to make a new interface between the city and its residents and to modernize and simplify the visual identity and to make it clearer and more comprehensive for all the uh, citizens. But this was the starting point. Over years, clutches have been built up 
and it was more than 250 logos in use. And because of this, it was very difficult for the citizens to understand what the city actually was doing and what kind of services they provide. And also it's difficult to know where our tax, how our tax money is being spent. So when we did the initial research, we asked about a lot of services and institutions that people really like, but they didn't have a clue that that was actually part of the, the city and this was a public service uh, that their tax money was being spent for. And it's also hugely complicated and, and very expensive to manage all these uh, identities. So we made a very uh, conservative estimate uh, that it cost the city of Oslo about 40 million kroner a year just to manage all these 250 uh, different logos. So obviously here there's also a big potential of saving money. Uh, but we knew that this was going to be complicated. In the city of Oslo, uh, it's more than 50,000 different employees. And they had all different needs and wants um, for this process and for the new identity. The city of Oslo is divided in more than 250 different uh, sub-organizations, plus all the schools and kindergartens and etc. etc. So it's you know it's it's a big and complex uh, organization. The city of Oslo uh, have different roles in people's life. It's a service provider, uh, it's an authority, but also a policymaker. And there's loads, loads of different touch points, both physically and uh, digitally. And with all these 250 logos in use, uh, the people that worked for these different organizations, they had an emotional attachment to their logo. And the same definitely goes with uh, the emotional attachment to the city seal among the citizens. And then also we had to manage in this quite complicated and sometimes shifting political landscape. As we know today, uh, there's more layers of information and the layers are becoming more uh, complex. And there's more voices out there screaming for our attention. So today, it was, you know, it's even more important for the city of Oslo that it presents itself in a systematic, a human and coherent and clear way. So when we were supposed to build this new interface, we had to define a robust but yet simple to use brand strategy and the brand structure. So we had to define those Lego bricks that could help us reduce the number of logos and to make it more tangible for the citizens, yet we have to make a system that could entail any eventualities. So, you know, how do we approach this? We could have easily spent one year doing initial research. We can probably you know, spend all our budget just trying to answer all the questions that we, all the stuff that we need to find out. But we want to start to make stuff as soon as possible. So we had a very short insight phase, and very quickly we started to make real suggestions. Uh, not only for the visual identity, but also for the brand platform and the brand hierarchy. So we actually prototyped the brand strategy as well. So very quickly we start to make examples of copy, an example for the logo and a part for the brand structure and so on. Then we just brought loads of people in and we worked in many, many iterations. And working in iterations made us flexible and we can change along the way. So for each iteration, we learn something new and then you know we could adjust and then bring more people into the process. Uh, design by committee is something that normally used in the negative term because it means you know you have to compromise a lot. But for us, we think that this is not a negative thing. And we think that we managed to make something that's a really strong identity, even though we had more than actually 1,500 people working for the city of Oslo actively taking part in the design process. And we also think that reducing logos, uh, removing all these 250 logos, we had to have a strong involvement to make, really make the, all the different people working for those organizations to feel ownership for the new uh, identity that we developed. I think it's also been crucial that we had a that we have a great relationship with the client. Uh, we've been working with a re really good and brave uh, and hardworking client, and I think that's been crucial. And we've also been working all along as one team. It's been fully transparent, and we had a good relationship, and I think that's been crucial. Uh, what, one of the things that we did is that in the old identity, it says Oslo Kommune, or uh, municipality, uh, and we removed Kommune from the logo, so now it's only um, Oslo in the logo. So the research um, that we did showed that 
people have a lot more positive feelings to only Oslo than Oslo Kommune. And it also it was a lot easier for all the different um, sub-organizations to identify with only Oslo. And obviously it's a lot easier to work with um, uh, digitally as well. Uh, we also made the brand platform, as I said, I don't have time to go into detail uh, doing that. But one of the things also is that Oslo has gone through a massive change over the last years. And there's lots of positive things happening in Oslo. And the city of Oslo has been an, a major role taking part in all this improvement of the city. But people don't really acknowledge that actually this is happening. So it's also a way for us removing the commune and with the brand strategy to bring the city of Oslo closer to its citizens. So then going into the actual visual identity. So here's the old city seal. This is Saint Halvard. Uh, that's obviously a long story and why is, is there. Uh, this was designed in 1924. This was way before any digital uh, services. It's very complicated, has lots of different elements, lots of colors, very complicated. And it doesn't work at all, you can see in smaller digital um, touch points. Uh, and not, it's not anything uh, here in accordance to universal design uh, guidelines. So we, need, we knew that we had to simplify. Uh, there's actually not only one version of St. Halvard, but this is some of the few that you can find around the city, in the town hall, on buildings, etc. Um, we did some research and we looked at what our neighbours have done. We actually came here on a study trip two years ago uh, to visit uh, Kruna here that's been working with, uh, with Stockholm Stad, with our client, and we also went to visit Stockholm Stad to talk to them. And it's interesting to see how they um, modernised and how they simplified their logos. You can see Helsinki is probably the one that's been most radical in their simplification. We also did some research, looked at other brands, how they modernized their logo. Uh, here are all the different elements in the old city seal, and then we had to identify which are the ones we have to keep, to keep enough of the history. So these are the ones we said, okay, these ones we have to prioritize, this will have to be in the new logos, and the other elements um, we can skip, basically. And we've been testing all kinds of different uh, versions, you know, to, from the very minimal and to the more illustrative. We had quite a few hundred different um, versions of the logo that's been testing and testing and testing. And eventually we ended up here, which is a good balance where we keep some of the uh, historic elements, but still it's, it's simplified and it works in digital touch points, etc. These are the colors for the new identity. Blue was a quite obvious colour. It's actually a colour called Oslo Blue, which is a light greyish blue. You can find blue on the trams. You can see here, this is the Oslo version of the national costume. And obviously we have the fjord. Uh, green as well. Oslo is covered by a big forest and we have lots of parks. But we also need some warmer, more neutral colours. And then we were inspired by some of the facades you can find around the city. To build and uh, make this identity uh, for this complex organization, we need to find a system that gave us enough flexibility. So we developed these three shapes for the um, foundation, for the identity. Uh, and you can find those shapes around the city, in the streets, architectural details, etc. But obviously these shapes of themselves are not unique. You can't really take ownership to a square or a circle. But the way we use them and the way the system works makes it both unique and also recognizable. These elements you can find in the logo as well, and they belong to um, part of the history of St. Halvard. We can use those same um, shapes to make a bit more abstract version of Oslo. And the system is based on this um, grid system uh, where the different shapes are placed. And the grid gives almost an unlimited number of possibilities, but it's still something that makes it recognizable. With all these different communication needs, we need to find a system where you can tone it up, or you can tone it down. So you can go from the more minimalistic, or you can go to the more um, kind of playful and uh, complex. We can use the shape to make less uh, complex uh, compositions as well. This is something that we used uh, made for a music offering in Oslo. Uh, the illustrations as well is based on the grid and the shape. We would have to make them slightly more organic, 
and slightly uh, less abstract. Here are a few examples of the illustrations. And then obviously we can animate them as well to make them come to life and make them a bit more playful. Uh, we designed the icon system, which is also based on the same grid and the shape. The font is an important part of the identity, and we found inspiration through the city signs that you can find in Oslo, and they've been around for many years. Uh, we had to, uh, we worked closely with a very good uh, font designer, and we had to make a font that was highly legible, uh, unique and timeless, and used across all touch points. So we made, together with the font designer, we ended up with these four weights. And I think we got the right balance between a friendly expression and formal. Uh, you don't always have to use the Oslo shapes because the font in itself and the logo is enough to make it recognizable. Uh, and it gives it enough flexibility that sometimes we need the information to be more formal and sometimes we make it more friendly. Here's an example of a waste truck that's just been implemented. Uh, here's a t-shirt and a mug. Uh, at the moment, we're working with the signage. Um, these are the existing, the old signs around Oslo, and obviously there's many, many signs on buildings and streets, etc. So this is something that's going to be highly visible. When we build the guidelines for signage, we want to uh, really take advantage of this uh, grid system. And again, We've been thinking with Lego blocks and make a system that makes it versatile and easy to use. So then we've developed this um, system for science. Uh, we are now testing prototypes. Uh, so these are the ones we're building at the moment. But the, um, the science will be implemented over years because it's going to be quite expensive if they're going to change everything in, in one go. Um, so it will take some time to make it implemented. So this is something, a design that we make for a reception area. And we've also been working with how these shapes can be used in urban areas and furniture. Uh, motion is also an important part of the identity. Uh, and since the Oslo shapes, since they're inspired by the cityscape, um, we wanted to keep their connection with the city. So that means that you won't see the shapes move around, but they always enter and exit within the grid system. And that makes them uh, stay true to the overall visual uh, look. So when the motion design principle were in place, we then start to de uh, detail more the dynamic design. And we quickly decided that the shape should expand and contract within its own boundaries and that the motion design overall should communicate something solid, yet flexible. And then these, the motion can also be applied for web design and guidelines for UI animation. Uh, it can be used for transition in films as well. Uh, but then we took the uh, motion design a step, a step, one step further. We started then to apply principle of, um, well, we have the, the shapes and motion, and then we have audio input, and then we make the shapes react to the audio input. So this is a project that we've um, done that.
Yeah, so that was the opening ceremony for the uh, Oslo is a European Green Capital uh, in 2019. So that's from the Town Hall in Oslo. Uh, in an organization of 53,000 people, there are always going to be lots of design needs where there's no budget to hire a professional designer. So we were then thinking, how can we use, how can we make an easy to use tool that requires no uh, design software and give all the employees the possibilities to make um, design themselves without the people having uh, skills or being designers? And how can we a way to create ownership and, but still make sure that everything is in accordance with the design guidelines? So what we did then is that we uh, created a digital design assistant. So now any other 53,000 people, uh, they can, all the employees, they can make their own design. And what they do is that they can input photos and they can input information or text. And then this will automatically generate design. And there's a shuffle, uh, shuffle button so they can shuffle around until they find the design uh, they like. And obviously everything will always be within the guidelines of the Oslo identity. Uh, these are just some of the examples that we generated from this uh, tool. And as you can see, it gives you a lot of variety, but still always being very consistent. Um, so that's something that's been a huge success, and a lot of people are using it, and we're now building more functionality into the tools. That's something that we're going to continue to work with. Uh, implementing the identity in all digital touch points, that's obviously a big job. We've been working closely with the City of Oslo, so we had a team of designers both from Corona but also from the City of Oslo, and they've been working together uh, doing the design for all digital touch points. Um, for digital touch points, uh, there's less room for you know using the shapes as um, decoration. It's important that all the shapes is really connected to functionality. So we've given kind of like less room for visual play, play, uh, playfulness. Uh, yes, and we're also building a, a design system. That's um, work that we're still doing. Uh, that will obviously go beyond visual elements. And this is about the reuse of elements and governance and uh, make it sustainable across all services. Uh, the first version of the new website, Design for the Website, was launched in June. Uh, this is a massive website with several thousand pages, so this is still under implementation and it probably will be for another while. So this is just a little sneak peek of the um, digital touch point. Uh, for a, such a complex organization, there's going to be loads of people inside the city of Oslo and also there are going to be lots of agencies working for the city of Oslo. So have all the guidelines for the identity easy accessible, it's, it's crucial. So this is where we have the guidelines, where they find inspirations, examples, uh, downloadable templates, etc. What's been important here is that we, our focus has been inspiration and examples rather than rules. So that's been important for us. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is a campaign, and this is something that we've done as part of the work for the visual identity. On Sunday and on Monday, we have the local elections in Norway, and then we have made a campaign for the local elections in Oslo. The last local election four years ago, it was only 63% of the people that actually voted, and less and even lower for young people. So we were asked to make a campaign you know, to make more people uh, vote. And what we've done with this campaign is that we looked at, okay, um, you know, we want to highlight the consequences of not voting. And then we developed uh, this campaign. And the word vote is stemma in Norwegian is the same as röst in Swedish, and it has a double meaning, meaning both voice and to vote. So basically this campaign is saying, if you're not voting indirectly, somebody else will vote for you. Uh, here are a few other examples, and because there's less young people vote, it was important that we also meet uh, young people. Uh, oh yeah, so this is first, uh, and also for the last month we have these pop-up places around Oslo, so you can actually vote before the election day. 
Uh, and the numbers of people that have been using that opportunity to vote actually before the election day is up 50% since the last election, so that's great. Um, yeah, so to meet the young people, we created also this campaign in social media. Yeah, and we also created a, uh, we've been working with some of the most influential podcasters, so this concept is also then implemented in uh, quite a few podcasts, so that's been quite interesting to work with. So the identity now is under implementation, and it will be under, in, um, under implementation for another few years, so thanks a lot.